Hello everyone, it is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another update. In this video, we're going to discuss and kind of give you a recap of October, as well as talk about some of the record cold temperatures that happened in October, and also take you through the early part of November and end with some of the snowfall where I think we are may fall in the first part of November. So before we do get started, if you like weather related content, please consider subscribing to my channel and also check out all my social media links down below in the description below. All right, so let's get started. Here is the some of the record cold temperatures that took place for Halloween. And you can see not only daily temperatures, but some of these are actually all time low temperatures in October it, for the deep south too, well into, well into Texas, even into California, I think. I think San Diego hit 45 degrees the other morning. That that's pretty that's pretty incredible. But you know, Denver hit three last time. It was nine. So that cold air is just getting colder and colder, and really impressive, breaking 100 year records. 1917, 1906, some of the coldest analogs in 100 years. So that's pretty historic cold that happened. And even this morning, even even further south, a lot of that cold air. Filtered further south, Waco hit 25 degrees. That that is incredible. That broke a, a 1917 record. That big analog of 1917. It actually broke that weather. So, so that that's that's pretty incredible. You know, Illinois got in the action. Indiana. So th these are all record lows or tying record lows or or close to a record low. So, but another record low that happened this month is uh, Peter Peter Sinks, Utah. It's a place, um, you know, it's elevated. It's about 8,100 feet up in a, on a mountaintop, but it's a, it's a sinkhole. And it's one of the coldest places in the United States. And this, this area hit an amazing 45 degrees below zero. And if that verifies, that would be the coldest temperature in October in the continental uh, US 48. Um, I think in Alaska, maybe it's 1979, don't quote me down on this, uh, it might've hit minus 48 by Dawson Creek. Uh, but that that is some some really impressive cold no matter where it where it took place. And here's some of the storm reports that happened last night, we had a potentially a huge tornado outbreak in the in the East Coast. Fortunately, it looked like mainly like a straight line wind event, but still it did a lot of damage up in the Northeast. And because we just had that those extremely warm temperatures for this time of year that kind of had that clash effect. But it's so far, and of course they'll be investigating, uh, there wasn't any re tornado reports. It was more of, a, more of a straight line wind event. So here I, I figured we go over the overall temperature, how October played out. And you can see much of the Northwest was well below normal temperatures. I think Dallas, you know, ended just slightly below average. It was an, an incredible month, a big transition month. I know in the Dallas Fort Worth area we hit the first eight out of 10 days, we were 90 degrees or better. And then we still ended below average for the month. That, that's how a big of a swing. We had three days, highs in the 40s here. It's 30 degrees below normal. <laughs> so, and a lot of that cold air just didn't quite make it to the south and southeast. But November, I think, will be almost the complete opposite of this. So we'll see how this shakes out. So here's the overall snow map, uh, how, uh, where we stand so far for, uh, for Halloween. And you can see a lot of this snow is even further in the south. And if you, you know, how it looks right now, this is like further, further west. So if you guys live in the south and southeast, I'd be pretty happy campers right now seeing this snow map because this is going to be a huge player later on in the winter months as these cold art breaks filter in. And so you'll be more in line to possibly see a lot of that snow drifting further south than in recent years because of this early snowpack aligning itself further west than it normally does. So here's the 500 millibar pattern coming up on uh, November 4th. So this is the first when I'm doing this video. So it's showing a, a deep low pressure. This system's reloading. This blocking high in Alaska has been there. We had a record high temperature in Alaska the other day of 53 degrees. And so we still have that high latitude blocking taking place and these cold art outbreaks and it's shifting east. So a lot of you guys has been missing out, as you saw in October, on the east coast and the northeast. 
they're finally going to get start getting entrenched in some of those uh, polar vortex lows that come down into the United States. And so this is on the fourth. It'll really start diving in and kind of get its act together on the seventh. And all this here is not really warm. It's actually showing just high pressure, uh, deep Arctic shallow cold air that'll be entrenched in and started getting filtered into the south and southeast again with another major cold front. But um, we have a second system, you know, like I said, behind that will eventually filter in by the actual the ninth around the 10th, the coldest uh, air of the season into the north and northeastern parts of the United States. And you might see some some of your first snowfall uh, around the ninth or 10th at the time frame too, and in, in the north and northeast, and we'll, we'll kind of go over that. But again, here's some of the anomaly map showing the, the obviously the complete opposite of what actually happened in and uh, October is showing a flip in the pattern the first 10 days where it's warm on the west coast and well above, well below normal in the south and southeast and much of the northeastern parts of the United States. And even the even the NOAA has flipped guidance when they first put out their November outlook. It uh, was like, you know, pretty warm for November, October 17th, as they were guiding for November. But then they analyzed it yesterday, and it's almost the complete opposite, where it's showing a, a pretty pretty cold pattern taking place. And this is the first week in, in November showing these systems, that blocking pattern where it's above normal in Alaska, as uh, getting the trench cold into the, into the north and northeast, and eventually make it to the south and southeast. And even, even the, the rainfall is gonna kick back in for a lot of the parts of the south uh, and the southeast coming in that you know, Wednesday, Thursday with that, with that cold front that's coming in on a Thursday for the south. But here's some of the temperatures is gonna happen. So this is, this is Wednesday. So it's showing, I mean, this is actually Thursday. So it's showing these high temperatures on Thursday, the 4th, coming up where uh, up in the Dakotas, where it's in the 20s and 30s, and that cold air is, 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 is making its way south and, and Nebraska and Kansas and eventually Oklahoma, and it'll eventually make it into Texas. And like I said, eventually it will make it into the north and northeastern parts of the United States. And you can really see it entrenched now uh, coming up later on of the week where falling temperatures in the, in the 20s in the Dakotas and Minnesota and parts of Wisconsin and, and Michigan getting into below freezing temperatures as that cold air pushes further south deep into the deep into the United States and eventually like I said it'll swing to the north and northeast and really get locked in in a week from now where you're going to have below freezing temperatures for much of the Northeast, which you have not experienced that this year. And a lot of the parts in Maine that you may not even get out of the teens in some places uh, for the day. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the New England states and Pennsylvania and New York and parts of Virginia and West Virginia and of course, Ohio and Indiana. A lot of this, and like I said, even in the deep South, look at that. I mean, these are temperatures in the 30s uh, you know, of course, these are low temperatures now, but even in the even freezing temperatures, making it all the way down to South Carolina and North Carolina, um, even even parts of you know Texas that you're going to still get you know, potentially freezing temperatures. And like I said, this is this is nine, 10 days out. So a lot of this, a lot of this air has been Arctic in nature, and it's the coldest air you're going to have. So it's deep and shallow. So these models are actually gonna be probably even colder what they display by the time it actually gets here, all right? So here's the overall snow map on the, the first, this actually takes it all the way through the 9th of November. And like I said, I think this will be even enhanced a, a tad bit further once it starts filtering that cold air in the system. But this is how it kind of looks now that Snow, snow will fly in uh, Wisconsin and, and Michigan and in the upper parts of uh, New York and Pennsylvania and, you know, well, well into Maine. So I think a lot of the snowpack is going to be entrenched into Montana and, you know, North Dakota and South Dakota and eventually cl 
flip uh, you know parts of sh Chicago and Illinois and of course I'll I'll find that I'll fine tune this but you know as of right now the north and northeastern parts of the United States are probably going to see their first snowfall of the season the first 10 days you know on the back half probably around the 9th or the 10th of, of November but I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I just wanted to kind of give you a, a quick overview and an update of what's happening or, you know, what took place, what took place in October and what's potentially going to take place in the first week in November. Thanks for staying with me. If you did find value in this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and definitely stay tuned for the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.